to receive. Asking also, dear Lord, that you guide the heart and mind of our dear friend, Susanna Simon, who will speak with us about attitude, who will give us the taste of the hard work that she has put forth to come and speak with us. And we ask that we're all blessed on both realms of life to continue with our journey and help others continue their journey and together enlighten our lives. We thank you and so be it. So hello dear friends and we are here um, with a special guest today, right? Happy to have our dear friend Susanna Simons with, to, uh, with us uh, from Florida. Uh, even though we're here at the center of the SSB, our headquarters, uh, we're bringing her from the sunny Florida, right? But before we go on and we pass the word to you, Susanna, we would like just to go through the formal announcement, right? The introduction that is so important for all of us as well. I'm going to do this a little bit different today. Usually we bring um, um, the, the, the friendship and the, uh, the personal part of, um, uh, before we bring the formal. Um, stick with me. We'll, we'll, you understand what I'm trying to say. So Susanna Simon is, Simon is, is an active worker of the Spiritist Movement. Dr. Simon spends her time between her professional work as a doctor of physical therapy, her family, and the dissemination of Spiritism. Susanna has worked as a member of the Spiritist Federation of Florida and the United States Spiritist Federation. She's one of the founders of the Conscious Living Spiritist Group in Miami, where she works primarily overseeing the work in English. She is an active speaker in the U.S. and abroad. And personally, uh, and I say personally because this is a personal note, but I think, or I may even dare to say, I am certain that what I will say personal, my personal note will also fill the hearts of many of those who are watching us, who will be watching us. We all connect with you know, our friends um, that perhaps share good moments with us, right? And rightly so, uh, but I quite often try to remember as well the, the, the friends that perhaps we don't see it every single day or every week. Sometimes we see a couple you know, moments of the year but they have um, a place in our hearts because these are the individuals that during the moments of difficulties that we're going through were, was able to, or they were, because there are several, thank God, they were able to bring reason to our hearts, to enlighten our hearts so that the heart can flourish and change the environment within and change our environments without as well, outside as well. So if, you know, if I can say that I'm, really, really, truly um, happy to have you here, Susanna, because I'm quite sure that many of us have the same uh, idea and, and see not only you as a person, but your talks as well and your enlightenments as well, uh, the same way, bringing reason to our hearts to flourish the heart, right? And that's really hard. <laughs> many of us, we see, you know, spiritism, this rational thing uh, that sometimes it's hard to connect or the opposite, right? but you're able to make this link, especially when we're going through difficult times. So with no further ado, I know I spoke a lot. Um, we, uh, we pass the word to you to um, talk about attitude today. Thank you. Thank you, Leo. Um, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I hope you can hear me well and the internet connection will hold strong today. Um, I am very happy to be here. Um, thank you for the very kind and loving words. Um, this group has a, a special place in my heart. And um, I'm just really happy to be here to share something today that is um, a topic that's very personal. Um, not the most traditional delivery, I would say. Um, but something that I am actually currently undergoing and it's a little bit of a of sharing of an experience. I would like to start by 
bringing to you a passage that we find in Acts 19.2 that says, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And I like this passage very much because we can say that we believe in something without that belief actually doing much um, to our state of, you know, of being. So when in Acts we find this question, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? It means that, you know, did you actually, did the message actually resonate with you, within you, to the point that actually help things to, to, to be moved? Were you actually moved by the message to the point that it led to, to changes, to transformation? So Emmanuel does comment on this passage in Living Spring, and he will say that although the seed is helped by fertilization, water, and sun, it must do its inner work to be productive. So there's a lot of external factors that can help us in our journey for enlightenment, but the the essence of the work is done by us and is done within. So you will understand why I'm starting with this because the whole context of what I want to share with you guys today has to do um, with a very difficult experience that I had starting um, maybe nine, 10 months ago uh, by this time where I met someone, I, uh, a relationship happening in my life that was extremely difficult, was extremely challenging for me. And so it forced me to, to seek answers. It forced me to, to take a look at what was going on and to find a solution. And that's exactly what I did because I was very challenged by these um, relationship and I needed to to understand what was going on. So my fertilizers using Emmanuel's words were the Spirit's book, the book Atlas of the Heart by Bernie Brown, and the book Attitude by Andre Moreira. When we read Atlas of the Heart, or if you watch the HBO Max um show that is available. Brene Brown starts her um, her show by uh, bringing a question where she says, how do we build meaningful relationships with others and with the self? And she goes on to say that she used to, to treat this question as one question, but now she she used to treat these questions as two separate questions. How do I build meaningful relationships with others? And how do I build meaningful, a meaningful relationship with myself? And she came to the realization that those two are interconnected and in fact is one and the same thing. And hopefully by the end of uh, our uh, conversation today, you'll be able to see how that is uh, truly the case. So um, the first important step in the journey that I'm about to share was the need to take responsibility over the process. This is very important because as long as we are in a challenging relationship, looking at the other person and criticizing, judging, and labeling, we're in a position of victimization and powerlessness. So whenever we are dealing with any difficult situation, especially on the relational realm, the very first step that we need to take is take responsibility over the process. And within the realm of responsibility, there are some important items that we should consider. One is openness. And it does not make sense that we expect to see a different result if we are 
continue to do exactly the same things. If you want different results, we need to try something different. So openness to the idea of exploring a multitude of paths, perhaps something new that you have never tried before. Courage. It always takes courage once you decide to look at yourself. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But primarily, any time that we honestly look at ourselves, we will um, deal with some level of disappointment with our own selves with our uh, illusions that we have of ourselves. So it needs to come from the core, it needs to come from the heart. We need to be courageous. We need to be flexible and we need to embrace acceptance. We'll talk about acceptance a little bit more. We have to be willing to assign new meanings to our uh, experience, especially our past experiences. And perhaps the most important ingredient that goes under this big umbrella of responsibility is humility. Um, making peace with our humanity and acknowledging that there are times in life that we can't do things by ourselves. There are times in life that we need help. We need to reach out to others. So I decided to that I really needed to, to take an attitude, to do something about it. And that's why the title of this talk is Attitude. So in face of the, the difficult uh, problem that I had, I decided that I was going to study, that I was going to seek to understand what was happening with me, that I was going to uh, feel whatever I needed to feel in that moment. I was going to, again, ask for, for help. And I started to, it, it just felt like it was so complicated. I, I although I was trying to, to understand what was going on, I was so clueless. Even where would I start the process that I um, decided to, to do some individual sessions of family constellation just to help to stir the, the dust within my own soul and lift it so I could actually see, have a sense. And that's something new. That's something that I have never tried. I was a little scared. So I tried that. I also called for some friends who I felt that had perhaps a little bit more understanding and something that could offer and say, listen, I need help. I started reading uh, some books that I also thought could be helpful. And I decided that I was going to do this lecture. So what I did is as I started the process, I started like to document what was going on, what I was reading, what I was feeling, what I was thinking. And to put this lecture together as a way of like organizing my thoughts and organizing the entire uh, process. So I want to go back to humility again. Because for spiritist individuals, it's um, one area where I find that we struggle very much. We have this assumption that because we know what we know, we should be doing better. And we should not be needing help, which is pretentious, which is arrogant, which is a straightforward outcome of our pride and misunderstanding of, you know, what it takes to, to be able to grow and, and, and humbleness and, and ability to ask for help is a huge, huge step that we need to learn. So the first thing that I, uh, I, I tried to do was to identify what were the what was my posture and what were, what were the feelings that I was experiencing in dealing with this person? And so I was with my son. He was practicing football with a coach. It was a private lesson. I was sitting on a Sunday on a stadium, like on, on the, the stands by myself. It was a beautiful Sunday, not as hot as it is now in August. And I was reading 
And I put my book down and I love to do that. I don't read, read, read. I read it with pauses, pauses to think, pauses to feel. And I wrote on the uh, side of the book that what I was experiencing was reactivity. I had feelings of hostility, of aggression. I was being highly critic of this person. I was feeling superior. I was judging. I was being harsh. And some of the feelings that I identified were rage, anger, despise. And so, and a few more items to this beautiful list that I'm sharing with you all. So naturally, as I got in touch with all those feelings, I felt pain and I felt shame, but mostly pain, pain from still um, still be experiencing and, and, and having those feelings, they were definitely uh, dragging me down. And I felt like the man from the caveman story that leaving completely darkness and for his whole life, he, 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 he felt this red, this really foul smell that he didn't know where it was coming from. And one day he has a chance to, to, to see the light and to be under the light. And when he look at himself, he realizes that the, the, the smell, the bad smell was coming from his own wounds and his own skin that was mistreated and open. And he was terrified by his own condition and unable to bear the reality of what he had just witnessed. He runs back to the darkness of the cave. And that's precisely how I felt, with the exception that I had no intent of going back to the darkness of the cave. I decided that I was going to take care of those wounds and do my best to, to take care of the hygiene of my own being, of my own soul. So I established for myself a couple of goals, a philosophical one, which was basically to dive into the darkness of my own soul and seek, uh, seeking for the light. And a second one, a little bit more behavioral, which was to shift from an instinctive and reactive reality to a more humanized reality. And what do I mean by that? Well, as primitive uh, beings, we are primarily instinctive. So we are primarily reacting to life in an attempt to survive. What makes us human and differentiates us from the animals is that now we can think and we can feel. Therefore, with thinking and feeling, we are able to override our instincts. And instead of react, we can now act. I may feel like I want to kill you, but I understand that this is not the best solution. And although my whole being is wanting to move forward and attack, I say to myself, this is not good for me. So I refrain myself from reacting. And now I am acting. I am acting because I am an intelligent being that can make choices and my intelligence can override my instincts. So I wanted to be able to not react, but to act. However, we can only act when we know ourselves. So the instinct, they come from a place of fear and it comes from a place of survival. So the more you know yourself, the more you understand where the fear is coming from, where, what is your reactivity about, the better equipped you are to not react and instead to act. So at that point, I started the immersion process, which I am still undergoing this process. But the, the, the process of going inwards is a very costly process for the ego, as I mentioned before. Why? Because it crashes the illusions that we have, the false ideas that we have about ourselves. Every time that we go inwards um, with honesty, it 
The process will involve some level of frustration, of disappointment. We're going to face our inner conflicts. We're going to deal with our own contradictions and the paradox of being a human being. So the pressure can be very high. The air can be very scar scarce. The pain can be very crushing. And for in order for it to be done and to become bearable, there are some things that we can do to help the process. So during the pandemic years, I started a group, uh, online group, part of uh, our center of basically um, support. And one of the things that I realized uh, in doing this group and a whole bunch of people trying to be better human beings is that for us, spiritists, Christians, the process of inner transformation is usually loaded with um, loaded with uh, pain and pressure. We have these um, this pressure of being better, and um, and a lot of the the suffering that goes into the process comes from not being able to meet our own expectations in regards to the process. So what I want to share with you today is um, some techniques that we can use that can facilitate this process so that the process is more bearable, so that the process is less crushing and is lighter and is more doable. So when you think about diving, like real diving, we think that, you know, the diver needs to, again, deal with the pressure and deal with the, uh, has to have a good tank with a proper amount of oxygen so that he or she can survive under the water. When we dive inwards, we also have these pressures. We have the external pressures, which is, again, this religious belief that we have to be better at all costs, the cultural beliefs, and we have the inner pressure, the inner pressure that comes from judgment, that comes from pride. And at all times, we are our worst enemies because we are constantly judging ourselves. We judge others to the extent that we are always judging our own selves. So when you combine the inner pressure with the pressures from our culture and even our religious uh, system. We must evolve. The purpose of life is to be a better person. All those things combined create a tremendous amount of extra and unnecessary suffering in the process. So I'm going to start by giving you three different thoughts to help decrease the pressure. The first one is that the goal of life is not, is not to be better. That's correct. You heard me right. The goal of life is not to be better. What is the problem when we wake up every day and we say to ourselves, I have to be a better person? The problem is that underneath this statement, there is this assumption that you are not good enough, that you are not a good person. So we are fighting the reality of who we are, a much perhaps more compassionate alternative for the thinking, you know, that I have to be better because I'm not good enough is to love the present moment and to live it wholeheartedly. So what does that mean? That means that we are enough. There's nothing really wrong with us at this time. Being human is not a sin. <laughs> Being human is divine, is what is intended to be. So I am where I can be. You are your best version of yourself right now. So am I. So instead of wanting to be better, the idea is that we are just going to embrace who we are and we are going to start 
every niche new day with a new mantra. We're going to say to you to ourselves, today I am enough. And again, that what that does, it opens the first gate for self-acceptance. The second step that we are going to take is to give up on moral judgment. And this is a big one. So we are going to move away from labeling our experiences and our emotions as this is good and this is bad. This is, you know, was okay or not. This was worthy or not worth it. Um, because, again, if I label something as this is a bad feeling, um, then naturally the correlation is, well, I'm a bad person. When I uh, was undergoing this process in the very beginning, I call a friend and I share with him the list of my postures and feelings and how bad I was feeling. And he said to me, you feel bad because you are you, you grew up within the, the religious belief uh, and culture of good and bad. And you put yourself under this moral judgment that makes you feel bad. But you're not bad. You are human. You are frail. This is not evil. This is frailty. And so it was really helpful to me to start thinking in different terms. So what is the alternative for moral judgment? What do I do instead of putting a label of good and bad? What if I look at what I'm feeling or what I'm experiencing, and instead of saying this is bad or this is good, I just pay attention to see if that situation, if that experience is adding to who I am or it is withdrawing from who I am? Is it limiting me or is it liberating me? Is it is the experience weighing on me and grounding me or is it um, lifting me? Is it allowing life to flow? Is it, is it, is it an experience that is vitalizing me or is it something that is creating obstacles and, and, and withholding the flow of life within me. Now, notice that this is a much less judgmental approach. I am still, I'm not closing my eyes to what it is. I am not going to unconsciousness, but my approach to what it is, is one that allows for much more compassion, for acceptance, and for integration of what it is. Because every time that I judge something, I exclude. Every time that I judge something, I separate. So if I look at a, an aspect of myself and I say, this is bad, I have two options in terms of what I'm going to do with that bad part of myself. I may impose on myself from the outside in a different behavior without necessarily addressing the root cause. So that behavior, that evil behavior will manifest elsewhere because it was never understood, processed, and transcended. Or I can deny and try not to look at and throw that back into my unconscious. Um, but what that does is it separates, it pushes away a part that is me as well. When I see that same characteristic outside of me in somebody else, I'm going to have an immediate negative reaction. And I am not going to like that person. I'm going to push that person away. I'm going to judge that as bad. And the same thing that I have done to me, I'm going to do to that person. This is how, going back to Brené Brown in the very beginning, there is really no separation when it comes to how I treat others and how I treat myself. 
So it's the alternative here is not to judge, but if I look at something and I determine that that thing is not serving me, it's not adding to who I am, on the contrary, subtracting, then I can approach it and say, let me take care of this. So it's something that doesn't need to be pushed away, but it needs to be integrated, it needs to be understood, it needs to be taken care of, it needs to be address it needs to to heal so if i push it away there's no chance to heal what i cannot see so we can only address the things that we see do not judge accept integrate so acceptance opens this huge space for transcendence for expansion so with that I start my day now saying, I am enough, but also I am good. I am holy. So it's a different paradigm because the paradigm that we leave is one that we are, we are bad. We are inadequate. We are low. And that is our humanity paradigm is in, in all of us. So we need to start changing the way that we think and say, I am enough, I am good, I am holy. The third thing that we need to do is to give up. We need to give up on, um, on criticism because criticism is a very toxic uh, behavior. And while we're dwelling criticism, there is really low or no opportunity for empathy, for example. We need to give up on demands. We have all these high demands of behaviors, of attitudes that um, we are not ready to, to manifest yet. So we place expectations for ourselves that are not realistic. We have to give up on pity, self-pity, because while we are feeling sorry for ourselves, we're giving up. Uh, to focus, the possibility to focus on our own strength, and we all have strengths and um, abilities. We need to give up on complaining because if we are stuck in complaining, we will never have time and space to find solutions. We need to give up on blaming because blaming is always done from a place of victimization. And when we need to change blaming for empowerment. We need to give up on judgment, like I said, to open space for self-love and to be investing in other values. We need to give up on comparison. Comparison, according to Brene Brown and her work and her research is inevitable. We are always comparing ourselves uh, to others, but we can choose what we're gonna do with a comparison. We can compare to someone and say, well, this person has accomplished and achieved this. And I can say to myself, what is it that I can do to, what is the work that I need to do in order to get to this place without wanting to pull the other person down? And I can compare, but not necessarily use comparison to put myself down. We have to give up on denial um, and embrace self-love and self-respect. So we have to give up on everything that, all these behaviors that actually do not add to who you are, who we are, do not lead to the expansion of our beings, such as judgment, criticism, uh, unexpected, uh, unaccepted, unacceptable uh, expectations, anything that hurts us, crucifying ourselves, denying part of ourselves. We have to give up on all those things. Instead, we can choose different things such as love, compassion, conciliation, understanding, feeling, integration, expansion in life. So with that, we can add one more component to our daily mantra. 
we can wake up in the morning and say to ourselves, today I am enough. Today I'm good and I am holy. And today I give myself permission to heal and to be happy. So these three elements, they are, they were very helpful. They really, really helped me to, to start this process of immersion without so much pain and without so much suffering. And I call this phase of um, the process as the decluttering uh, phase. In other words, um, it was just kind of moving, you know, all these like piles of dust from my inner house of pressure, all these toxic elements of my psychic environment and opening space to be present with what it was and to acknowledge what I was feeling and to allow the feelings to be. Because feelings are an, a wonderful thing, no matter how we insist in labeling them, they are nothing else and nothing more than messengers of the soul. It is the way that God speaks to us. It is through our feelings. They, they, they come and they tell us what our soul is wanting to speak, what is our, where is our true self is in our spiritual evolution. And so during this process, I, I like to write and I wrote different things. And sometimes I write in English, sometimes I write in Portuguese. So I'm going to share with you guys one of the things that I wrote as part of my processing. So it says like this. I have been buried and I am now trying to emerge from the dark within following nothing more than instincts, craving the light never seen. I crawl up on a scent, tearing down my own skin, seeking sight desperately in need to find me, only me. Pain crushing every step. Blood, bleeding, hope that never left, embracing life, here I go to a place called never return, never return. But at once, when and if I turn, I will recognize without the pain of agonize that it was all all right and it took me to where I have arrived. Blessing pain, blessing day, that I was brought to the shore and life rocked me back and forth to make this day a holy day. So what was happening with me throughout uh, this process? And I went back to Emmanuel, you know, he has a, a sentence in, in one of his books that he says that in us there is the desire to go to God, to be with God, but that our neighbor is the bridge. So this sentence is so true. And a lot of times people ask me, you know, God is like this very far away being, how do I get closer to God? Well, you get closer to God by getting closer to your fellow human beings. Um, our, um, our neighbor is our bridge to God. Each one of us is God's creation. And so the more, the closer we get to God's creation, the close we are to God. And so this person, this person who at first was such a, a challenging uh, relationship for me, one that it was, it was, it was, it was biggest, the feelings that I described to you and to the point that I I really felt like, my goodness, I don't even know where to start to look at all these feelings that caught me by surprise. He became a bridge, a bridge to the God within, to all the things that I have learned and continue to learn about uh, myself. So it took me to, to, to this place um, 
where we all need to be from time to time, which is the desert. Um, there is a desert where is a place where we go completely alone. No one can go with us. And once we enter the desert, right, is when we are able to, to touch our pain, to meet with our sorrows, and to enter the areas where we perceive us lacking. And in that space of pain, of sorrow, of vulnerability, a lot of common themes to our humanity often will surface. So for me, um, things like need to be seen, need to love and want to be loved, feeling overwhelmed with expectations and demands that have been placed on me and transferred to me on the course of my life, living fiercely to meet expectations of perfection. All those things came up from this process, whether it was the family constellation, whether it was when I was writing or when I was crying or when I was feeling bad about myself, you know, those themes um, which are really common to our humanity and they're going to express in us a little bit differently in different proportions, but we all have some of those because all of us carry within ourselves uh, an inner child, a wounded child, um, which is part of also our humanity. Why? Because our parents were imperfect parents. Our grandparents were imperfect parents as well. So our parents have in themselves their own in a wounded child, we carry our uh, wounded child within ourselves. And no matter how good of a parent you're trying to be, you are not perfect. And your children will also have within themselves a child that is wounded and that will need to be attended at some point. But we have choices. Um, when we are dealing with this uh, inner child and our needs and our vulnerabilities. We can continue to be a child, um, expecting that others will take care of us, demanding from others what we have not received, criticizing our parents, complaining about life, or we can grow up and take charge of our own selves. This child belongs to us. I can now look at the child and say, hey, what is it that you need? You want to be loved, I'm here to love you. You want to be picked up, I'm here to pick you up. You want to be seen, I see you, right? So we can take over and take care of that child. And in order to do that, there are three postures that can be also very helpful. One of them is forgiveness. So forgiving our own humanity, our own vulnerability, letting go in the process of forgiveness of this unrealistic, expectations. So self-forgiveness grants us this like incredible freedom and lightness. And the more we're able to forgive the human in ourselves, we're also able to forgive the human in others. So letting go of unrealistic expectations and forgiving the human in you. Gratitude, the ability to recognize what is full in life what was possible in being grateful for what you have and what you didn't have. Because whether you realize this or not, today you are the result of everything that, for example, your parents gave you, but also what they didn't give you. Because what they didn't give you also contributed for you to become who you are. So, Andre Morera, in his book, Attitude, he shares the story of these two trees that grew up side by side, separated by a wall in two neighboring houses. In one of them, there was this, um, uh, the gardener was extremely, extremely attentive and never, ever let that tree had any needs. Whereas the other one was a very caring gardener, but once in a while he got a little distracted, didn't water the plant. In other words, one day a big storm came and that plant that had given had been given everything uh, broke very easily. Whereas the other one, although it bent and suffered, it never broke because the roots 
were very deep. Why were they very deep? Because since he didn't get the water that he needed um, every day, he had to go find the water elsewhere. So did we. So maybe we didn't get everything that we needed from our parents, but that made us stronger. That made us a lot of times successful. That gave us talents, creativity, resilience, and a number of attributes for which we should be also grateful. So learning to appreciate what has been given. And from the spiritual perspective, we also know that our parents were the perfect parents for us. Um, given our level of evolution, given where we are, they were exactly what we needed. We are the perfect parents for our children. They, we are exactly what they need. And my parents was the best that I could get for this incarnation. So we need to be grateful because nothing is random. And we can look at it from a psychological perspective, but also from a spiritual perspective. But for me, one of the things that helped me the most in this process was to work on the idea of patience. Patience is the science of making peace with what it is, with your own self, to make peace with, uh, with people, with whoever they are, whatever they are, and with reality as reality is. So patience um, is something that fuels us with strength and stimulus. Patience respects time. Patience soothes anxiety. Patient understands, for example, that it's not because you are overwatering a plant that the plant is going to produce before its time. On the contrary, you may drown, drown the, the, the plant. So when we exercise patience, we understand that there is a time for everything in nature. We understand that we are also nature. So there's a time for ourselves. We will not produce before the right time. Just like nature, we're made of seasons. So right now, like I mentioned before, I am the best version of myself. When you think about a child in second grade and that child writes with like, you know, the handwriting is not pretty, that child does not feel shame because the handwriting is not perfect because that child understands that that is where she is in her lab of evolution. That's not all she's going to be, but that's what she can be at second grade. She understands that there will be a time that her handwriting will be beautiful and more complex, but there is no shame in being second grade. So patience is making peace with where you are. It's not that we are sitting back and say, okay, there's nothing that I can do. On the contrary, we're doing a lot. I mean, this little lecture that I'm sharing with you, there is a lot of work in here. And not only putting the thoughts together, but mostly a lot of inner work that was uh, done. So what patient does, it leans on reality as opposed to fight reality. So I will, I hope that this entire content can be helpful to someone that is struggling with self-acceptance, with self-love, and perhaps dealing with a difficult relationship. And I want to share with you one more little piece that I wrote as I um, end my um, conversation with you guys today. Um, in this process, I realized that I am an adult person who cares for order, organization, and control. But I finally realized that the main mess in my life is internal, is really within. As I entered this sacred, messy space, my own soul, I gradually started to organize the shelf of feelings, the closet of emotions. I swept piles of resentment. 
I dusted unreasonable expectations. I air out an environment, an environment toxic with guilt. And when the first of many cleanups was done, I added some flowers of compassion in every room of the house and opened wide the windows so the breeze and fragrance of patience and love could take the whole ambience. And another day, I saw a table that was very, very messy, very disorganized. And I realized that it didn't bother me with the same intensity that would had in different times. It did not seem either so urgent that I would need to organize it immediately. Why? Because internally things were more in place and there were more space in me for understanding and for humanity. So what I realize is that I never ever set this journey to be a better person, but I became a better person. Not as a goal, but as an outcome, as an outcome of non-judgment, as an outcome of self-love, as an outcome of a better relationship with myself, embracing who I am, a person, yes, is still capable of feeling rage, of being angry, of being hostile, of being combative, but instead of being ashamed of that, just by embracing that and, and, and being curious about the, the source of all of that, for which I don't have all the answers yet, and nor have I entirely been able to solve this situation, which is very important for me to say, because the last thing that I want to give you all is the impression that I was successful in my attempt because the, the, the load that we bring from our past lives, from our emotional selves is too deep and it's too heavy. And it, I, I appreciate very much the opportunity of doing this lecture again. That's probably the fourth or fifth time because every time that I do it, I am able to go back and to revisit the process. And I tell myself that I remind myself that I still have uh, work to do, a lot of work to do. But that is another thing is like, if you ask me, so how are you doing with the process today? And if I tell you that, you know, I'm not going as fast as I wish, this is not part of my agenda. I shouldn't say that because that is also a judgment of the time, a judgment of the speed that I should be moving. And we need to come to terms that self-transformation is a very, very slow process because it's very difficult for us. Our, our egos, they, they, they defend from all these feelings in order to, to survive. And so it takes a tremendous amount of courage, patience, persistence um, to be able to be successful. The most important thing is to be kind to yourself and to be patient. Make peace with who you are. Make peace with the time for things. A lot of people come to me and say, it's taking too long. I try, I try, and I don't change. And I say, the only thing that you cannot do is to give up on yourself. Don't give up on yourself. Just press forward with kindness, with love, with compassion. And at the right time, at the right season, you will see the flowers and the fruits that you were meant to produce. With that, I thank you guys for the opportunity and pass it back on to you, Leo. Just trying to, okay, it is not muted. Thank you, Daniel. Susanna, I, if I say that I'm out of words, <laughs> <laughs> I would not be able to, um, let's say, explain myself well, because I have a lot of words, but at the same time, you know, it's quite a bit. First of all, we would like to thank you for sharing this with us. And it takes a lot as well to, uh, even though you didn't mention names or you didn't give us any hints, not that we're looking for, um, that 
you know, of the person that you the, the, that you had this experience because it obviously was not with, you know, an element or a material thing it was with a person, right? Because we all express feelings and, and this is how we crash, right? This is how we we clash with one another is through feelings, right? This um, connection that you, the, the way you identify feelings as though, as well as this connection with God. So we thank you for that because it takes a lot of courage. There are a lot of um, comments and um, questions that we would like to share with you as well. First of all, I always like to get, just take the moment to welcome um, some of those who are here with us, uh, who are here with us, um, you know, sharing this moment with us. Kirsten saying, you know, hello, uh, welcome, Sue. We wish we had you in person. Uh, we'll get to talk more about that later on because it should happen soon, <laughs> right? Sure, but, why not? Now we can travel. Right, exactly. Uh, um, all of our friends of um, uh, North Beach as well. Um, and, you know, the different friends who are with us. Um, and Kirsten saying, uh, thank you for being so courageous and sharing these parts of you with us. So true. Um, and then a little bit more here. On that note, I would like to open up for our friends who are here with us as well. If you have a question, please um, let me know and I'll, I can take the microphone or I can uh, repeat the question here. Kirsten saying it's one of the uh, one thing to talk about self-improvement, but it, it's totally different when it, you actually implement it. It's scary facing who we are, facing our own self. Bravo, Sue. Yeah. Um, yeah. In, in regards to Kirsten uh, comment, the one before, not this one, um, I just want to say that it's um, this one here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's just so you know. I I heard that a lot every time I do this lecture. Um, people are, you know, they they move. They are, you know. Um, they compliment me on, on being courageous. And I think one of the things that I have uh, taken away from it is that, you know, there is no shame in, in, in sharing those things. You know, it's so, it's so incredibly liberating to be able to, 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 to say that, you know, we, we, we struggle in these ways that we have these feelings and what is really amazing is to be able to say that to, you know, whoever is listening, right, without feeling diminished in any way. Because the problem is that one of the big obstacles is that we have those feelings in judgment, moral judgment kicks in, and we feel diminished, we feel less. And so... If you truly, truly understand that to be human is also divine, that God really wanted to be like this, that this is a natural part of our evolution. It doesn't make you bad. It makes you just that human. There's actually beauty in, in you know, we, we, we are a world of contrast, of, of conflicts, and, and that's just the way it's meant to be. It doesn't make you less in any way. Then it's just like it's incredible the amount of weight that is lifted from 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 within, and and it's it's just very freeing to be able to to talk like this without any any concerns. My mother, however, uh, said to me, "Why?" And when I did in Portuguese, I used some very very strong words, and she's like. Are you sure? Is that what you mean that you felt like? Yeah, mom. It's not. It's not like an issue with your Portuguese, you know. And she was so concerned, maybe about my image that probably somehow reflects on her. I don't know, but it was just interesting to see uh, her reaction and, and, and her concern, which is great for the meal. We can have a, a therapeutic session on, on that alone. So I just want to say that. Very well. Thank you. Thanks for explaining that. And this leads, usually I pass the word for questions and we're going to read here. But since you touched on this on this um, subject, right, of, of, you know, freeing ourselves, right? Uh, of course, this did not happen overnight. Uh, it took steps, right? And once the steps that, as you were speaking earlier, I was thinking about is the acknowledgement 
that there is a problem. And sometimes that, that, that can be the main barrier of going through these other elements that you describe here or the self-analysis, right? What would you say about this, this, this f- first, if really so important element of diving within ourselves to acknowledge that there is a problem, whether there is a, a problem within, because most of the time it is the problem within, or perhaps there's recognition that we may see someone outside having a problem and we need to understand that as well. Again, just the acknowledgement. Uh, what would you say would be the, uh, the, the best thing to do or the most appropriate way to act towards that pivotal, pivotal moment right, of our lives? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's attention. Attention to the present moment. Attention to what we are experiencing. And usually what is going to characterize an event as something that would probably benefit from our attention and care is the intensity. Um, So you may say, let's say you and I observe someone and then we talk about what we observe. And I say, it's so unfortunate that that person is acting like that. And you may say, this is completely unacceptable. And, and, you know, and, and then you were loaded with very, very strong feelings. So that is a red flag. So anything that really elicits a lot of strong negative feelings within us, it's usually something that requires our attention is a warning sign so i think that you know how can we increase awareness to know whether there is a problem or not or something that we have an opportunity to address is to develop this attention to what is happening how our inner world is responding to what is thank you thank you Um, We'll continue here. Um, I'll actually put some other comments here. And if you would like to extend the comment, just as you did last time, you can uh, feel free to do so. Um, As she said before, it's one thing to talk about the self-improvement, but it's totally different when you actually implement it. It's scary facing who we are, facing our own selves, Bravo. And um, I guess she was giving emphasis to, uh, this is Kirsten, giving emphasis to I am enough. Yes, you are. Uh, you said so. Yes, Joanna mm-hmm. DeAngelis always reminds us to have self-compassion and self-love. And then we move on to Abby. Uh, Abby saying, yes, thank you for sharing your vulner- vulnerabilities with us. For me, I need to take a deep breath before going inward. I have to prepare and open uh, to areas that need attention and improvement. Again, thank you for your talk. Very much so. The... Another comment from you would like to say something. Sorry, Susanna. No, I think I think I think to um, Abby's comment. I, I hope that those thoughts and, and ideas and techniques that I share can help making it, um, you know, a little less strenuous. Um, if if that is the word, you know, take a deep breath. It's like, you know, it's like you know, it's kind of heavy duty, right? Heavy duty work. So that was the whole intent of the talk is to actually um, help people to kind of normalize it a little bit more and understand that it doesn't need to be that painful. And then a question from Kirsten. Um, she says, Sue, loved, um, I love the ideas you are sharing. How can someone let go of hardwired feelings, beliefs, or self-doubt or self-disgust, or self-hate. Yeah, that, I mean, a a good therapist, (laughs) right? A good therapist can help with that. There are some things that, um, you know, just like, just like um, one one image that came to me when I started this work, it seems like... um, so my, my head client and I um I was um I was in New York um 
in April, and I saw this. Um, there's a specific name for this sport, which I don't recall right now, but there's in Central Park those rocks, and the people like holding on to the rocks and and just trying to to climb it. But in Central Park, so it's not like mountain climbing, and they do it with their hands. And when I when I saw that, the idea that I had to my own self, to my own process, it was that. I was looking for a place to where I could actually put my hands and pull my body weight, and I couldn't find, and I didn't have a grip, enough of a grip to even start. So there are some things that are very difficult, they're very ingrained, they're very deep, that it's, um, it's in this lifetime, but it's also in previous lifetimes, we need to ask for help. You need to understand that, you know, some of these patterns are very, it's not by, you can say, and you can breathe in and out, I am enough over and over and over. But there are times that we need a little bit more. We need a little bit of help from, you know, who can help us. And that's when I think that, you know, if you can have access to a good therapy, that can be very helpful. I, uh, well, thank you for, for the answer. And hopefully, Kirsten, that um, uh, satisfies your need there. And I think it, it, it helps. Uh, one thing that I would like to add, if you can go ahead and share with us um, the name of the books again um, that you mentioned at the beginning. Um, and I'm going to show, I'm going to skip one question here, but I'm just going to show a, a, a question that Kirsten brought to us as well. Is this book? I don't think so, Kirsten. Yeah, I saw this question. I don't think so, unfortunately. Um, it's a, a, a really, really incredible book. I'm going to talk to Andre and push him to translate this book. Nice powers there. Force him. <laughs> Force him. I okay. have this much you power. Have to do it. Yes. You know what he's going to say? Hey, why don't you help me? Why don't you take care of it? And it's going to yeah, be all more exactly. You know how us you spiritists will. are, right? You give yeah. it to guess what? You got to take care <laughs> yeah. But anyways, all right. So let me share a question that uh, Daniel brought to us here. Hi, Susanna. Excellent reflection. Thanks. Um, once we identify the part on us that needs to be transformed, how do we process after we recognize that? Proceed, excuse me. Sorry. Proceed. Um, the, I, I would say the most powerful thing that you can do is not do anything. <laughs> so once you identify um, a issue of feeling or, or something very difficult, try to just breathe that in and out. And because what happens is um, a lot of times we try to process cognitively. And as we try to process something cognitively, we end up um, distracting ourselves from what can truly, truly transform us, which is to feel. You need to feel whatever it is, the pain, the, the shame, the, the vulnerability, whatever it is that is, you know, um, silence. We, 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 we talk too much. We talk too much. We, 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 we think too much. And a lot of time the answer is in feeling. So, uh, for example, with, with this person in, in a certain moment, um, I came to the realization that there was a deep, deep desire in me of like having a closer relationship with my father and not only for him to love me, but I, I, I wanted, I wanted to be able to feel it, uh, sorry, to, uh, freely feel my love for him, which I was never able to do, uh, in my life. And, and I just allow myself to, to, to feel that. I didn't try to do anything necessarily. And it's incredible because it feels like you're not doing anything, but to feel is a lot. To, there's a lot of action in actually feeling. It feels like you're just sitting doing nothing, but not. And as you feel, it's amazing because insights come um, the, 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 the heaviness and the toxicity um, of certain situations is drained away as you feel, as you cry, as you just sit with that. And a lot of times what happens is when you get to the other edge, you are 
you were transformed by that experience and you 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 gain a, a better understanding of what was behind the whole thing and you move on differently so you didn't try to do anything you just allow yourself to feel and that is what i have been really trying to do as i you know have always i i, I see a lot of people like they, they have the need to immediately explain come up with a uh, an entire lecture, a spiritualist lecture on what they should be doing without realizing that by doing that, they are just numbing their own feelings. I'm not smiling because um, you know, I think it's weird or or or, or funny, but it's it what you're saying is so true, right? Because you're guilty. Have, you're guilty of that. Guilty. <laughs> I am. Thank you. Yes, you know, we all are. The rationale yeah. always kicks in, and you want to yeah. find, you know, that passage on the gospel according to Spiritism that yeah. this is going to, sure. you know, uh, this is going to be the silver bullet, right? But it yeah. doesn't work that way, and we need to yeah. feel it. We need to experience. And, yeah. and I, I, I want to read a comment, and, and with this comment that Kirsten made, uh, I would like to ask a question as well, because you also touched in a, in a, in a part besides vulnerability that is very important to us. So. Here's, she says, Susanna, this has been a beautiful presentation. You have reminded us that it's okay to be vulnerable, imperfect, and still love ourselves. This has been a comforting talk as well as enlightening. Very true. And on this idea of vulnerability as well, I would like to add one, one other element that you mentioned, right? Is the, is the family burden in a positive way? I want to say burden, but, you know, but the, the pressure that we bring from our, our parents, uh, you know, being a family member who is trying to do the best that we can. And sometimes we, we express that in a, in a very difficult way for others to understand, right? And we suffer with the outcomes of what we are expecting, right? Um, I would like to ask you to, you know, doing your recognition of, of this part of you that you felt that is is it was difficult to deal with that in 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 kind of um feel that that emotion right uh i think it's important uh to highlight on that because a lot of times we bring this burden with us uh that we were asked to do so much whether it being a, a older brother or perhaps a younger brother or whatnot whatever it is uh that really sometimes instead of help us uh really we we, we take it to a different level that can be detrimental to us and to others. Yes, um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there was a question in your comment, or. Well, the question the question is how you know how was that process when you dealt with that when when you when you analyzed that um, um, again. I mean, I, I want you to just to be vulnerable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, request. sure. Get why not? Once request. more. <laughs> yeah, I think I think one of the things that, um, like I said, that really helped a lot was to tap into the the gratitude, you know, gratitude for all that is, and and truly uh, work on feeling that. Um, but prior to you know. Let me let me let me talk a little bit about the the experience with my father, right? So my father was a person who um, I had a very little of a of a relationship with him. Um, he um, him and my mother were divorced, and as a child, I kind of took my mother's uh, side on the on the conflict, which should have never had happened, but it just happened. It's just how life turned out uh, for me. And uh, so part of my process was allow to myself to, to grieve what I didn't have to feel the, 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 the my, my wish, my, my, as a child, you know, um, it, it became obvious to me that I, that I craved that love, I crave to have that relationship. So I really allow myself to feel that. One day I was walking my dog and I was, um, 
watching uh, some TikTok that came up and it was uh, Lady Gaga doing a concert. I think it was the Super Bowl and she's playing the piano and then she stops and she gets up and she looks at the crowd and she says, hi mom, hi dad. In that moment, I was in the middle of this process. I just started to cry. I started to cry. I was like, I thought to myself, how good it would have been. You know, my father passed away. It's going to be two years now, October 20. Um, how good it would have been if I could have just have a, a dad that I could say, hi, dad. And, and, and so in that moment, I didn't try to, you know, to, to kind of um, tell myself that I shouldn't be feeling that or come up with any theories that your dad is alive. You know, he's, you, you, you know, I just, I just felt it. I just, I, I just allow that feeling, that desire, that, that, that craving for, for, for that father, for that connection to manifest. And after he did, it was okay. So it's good. You know, I, 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 I felt it and it helped me. And then once I, I did that, I, allow myself to cry, allow myself to feel, I said, but yes, but spiritism tells me that my dad is alive and I'm walking my dog. And so I look at this guy and I say, hi, dad. <laughs> so I still can say hi, dad, but not immediately after, not in a rush, not in an attempt to, to numb what I was feeling or my emotional experience. I allow myself to feel. And then I reminded myself, yeah, I still can do that, just like Lady Gaga did. I want to bring up the attention that Andre Moreira is in this room with us, and we were talking about his book, Attitude, and we were complaining that it has not been translated yet. So if he's listening, it's already there uh, for everybody to know, him included. It's on record, right? That's a good thing. On record, on I'm record. Gonna use, yes. I'm going to use a Kirsten's words here. Wow, simply phenomenal, uh, Sue. So, yes, it is a great explanation. I think this is extremely important for all of us um, to understand this and to feel it. And then look for the, the, the reasoning, right, to enlighten the heart. So it, it's just amazing. Thank you so much. Um, from the, our, our friends at the uh, North Beach uh, Spirit Center, uh, there is a beautiful. This, <laughs> there is beautiful in our beauty, in our vulnerabilities, because it makes us feel humans and in need of one another. Thank you for sharing your journey with us. So very true, um, and, and you did it again in a very um, open and 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 you know enlightening way, if I can say that way. You know this vulnerability, uh, this this connection with your father. And one thing that I would like to highlight to, if I may here, um, you know, with with all the respect, I know I don't want to take over, but sometimes, you know, the the the, the grieving, right? It, you know, we tend to um, apply towards the things that had happened, right? In terms of, you know, perhaps uh, the loss of someone, the loss of, but sometimes, you know, it is also the things that didn't happen, right? We we often don't think about it. And it's like the things that we could have not been or, or, or that we didn't get to be right um, or, or we didn't get to experience with others as well. So mm -hmm. I think it's great that you also highlighted that and, and, and connect with us that way. Just learn to sit with your feelings is liberating. And here he is. Um, yes, Andre, guess what? We're now, you know, all um, uh, questioning why it's not in English, right? The, your book. So thanks for dropping in as well and listening and be here with us as well, Andre. Um, I think that, you know, we can all say that if our lives are better today, whichever way that is, uh, is that you also have touched our hearts too in the past. So thanks for being here. Um, yeah, she's saying, please translate into English. And uh, not yet, unfortunately, he's giving excuses now. Uh, but translate it. <laughs> I told you he was going to say so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you said so. You said, yeah. Right? Yes. So, so now it's on us. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure we're going to have more conversations about that. But um, anyone here in the center would like to say or present a question now? Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, she, everybody's thanking you for this amazing talk, this amazing moment. Uh, Daniel, as usual, will... Um, uh, be in contact um, in, in the name of the SSB to 
not a not to share a, a moment like this uh, virtually, but you know, be here, you know, be with us, spend some time with us because it always helps as well. Uh, Susanna, I know it's hard to say, but I would like to give you a couple more minutes to say some final words. And why not ask you to say our final prayer as well and enlighten us uh, for the next uh, five minutes or so, please. Sure. So, like I said, I hope, I mean, I, I, I'm learning, right? I am um, just, um, like I said, I, I, I'm in the, in the process. And to me, the most important thing from what I have said thus far is, um, is this which I said at the very end, and I will repeat again, because I feel like a lot of times uh, people, they don't comprehend the, the grandiosity that is um, this process of self-transformation, the, the time that it takes. You know, we have this, we live in a world where everything is um, kind of instantaneous, is like right away, um, we, we live in a hurry and, um, and this is not something that happens with a touch of the screen. It, um, is slow, it's gradual. That's the way it is. So a lot of times people give up, they run away when they were just about to cross the line, but they didn't have the patience or the understanding that. This is it. It's, it's a pro this is the this is the purpose of our lives. This is what we're here for. This is what we will return for. The purpose of life is is to get to know ourselves. Is to is to do this process of of healing of 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 expansion of our beings. So it's not like it's gonna end tomorrow or the next day. This is it. This is life. So as long as we are feeling, as long as we are dealing with contradictions, as long as we are experiencing discomfort and joy and sorrow and excitement, this is we're living. You are alive. So congratulations. <laughs> just 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 keep going and just Take some time to, to, to cherish yourself, to acknowledge your accomplishments, to acknowledge your resilience, to acknowledge your beauty. And, and I did a, a reel another day with this new work that I'm doing that I, I, I said, and I repeat here, don't try to change everything because it's unreasonable. It's unreasonable to want to solve every single aspect of your life in one lifetime or this year, right? So there are some parts of ourselves that we just have to, to tolerate. We have to, to bear, just learn to bear, to be human is really, very helpful and and can really help us to to go through our lives with a lot less uh suffering and i believe that so much of the depression that we see nowadays also has to do especially in the spiritist movement uh, because the spirits do get depressed it has to do with a lot of the unrealistic expectations and the misunderstanding that we have about the law of progress and evolution um, and wanting to become um, evolve spirits like outside of the right uh, season. So I hope that that can um, we can kind of settle with these ideas. And with that, I ask you to join me in this final prayer by raising our thoughts to our Father, to our Master, and asking them to to guide us, to continue to guide us and to help us to, to feel their presences each day and every moment more and more. They are always with us, 
Help us to be with you. Help us to feel connected, to feel divine, to feel holy, to feel blessed, to feel embraced by this love that's always, always present and abundant in our lives. Thank you for the opportunity of this meeting today. We ask you to bless each person that is connected to us right now and each and every person who will connect to this lecture and ideas in the future and to bless our homes, our families, and to continue to inspire us and to give us the courage and the faith to move on, being our very best version each day and in doing so, inspiring and helping others to be as well. Thank you so much and so be it.